Hey class, welcome back. Today we're going to be going over some art history things, so stay tuned as we learn some culture. Hey class, how's it going? Welcome back. We're, today we're going to be covering another bit of art history today in uh, class today with Mr. G. For art history today, we're going to be looking at a piece by the world famous artist, Mr. Pablo Picasso. Uh, the piece that we're looking at today, and I know I'm sounding really happy, the piece that we're looking at is called The Tragedy. Um, I'm guessing I'm going for gallows humor here. Now, The Tragedy, the piece that we're looking at is one of his pieces from his blue period, Pablo Picasso. And going over a little bit about the work, work was painted in 1903 a long time ago over 100 years at this point we're, as we're looking at this piece let's talk about the things that i want you guys to examine and look at in that overall artwork all right so for this painting pablo picasso painted the tragedy in 1903 and depicts a man a woman and a child by the sea it has a melancholy mood to it and what tragedy has really occurred here now as you guys are looking at and examining this artwork i want you guys to look at the nuances inside this painting so as we look at that skyline where the horizon is where the sky meets the sea that line in the back i want you guys to see look at the different shades in the sky now some of those elements up there don't necessarily meet with what looks like a sky and as we transfer down to that painting so sky to sea to sand below everybody's got uh the two parents looking at their feet uh, but and I want you guys to look down there because at the bottom there you got some other lines, undulating lines that look awkward. The reason I'm put, pointing this out is because I want you guys to know that when he or create these paintings, sometimes artists, they didn't have the materials to work consistently in the paintings that they were doing. So if they messed up, they would scratch that painting and create a new painting on top of it. They wouldn't waste materials at all. Like uh, I know some of my uh, younger students, they'll take a piece of paper, they'll mess up, they'll ball it up, put it in the trash. It's all about reuse, recycling, and recreating all in that uh, materials. Don't waste materials, always try and rework them. And Picasso is one of those, uh, was another painter who did the exact same thing. Now for his painting, uh, they've gone back and they've x-rayed it. And when I say x-ray, it's x radiograph it was used to examine the painting. This examination showed a painting consisting of a horse and a bullfighting ring laid underneath it. This was typical of Picasso uh, during his 1901 bullfighting paintings. And some of the bright blue paint from this picture can be seen coming through the dark blue paint in the tragedy. So again, you have those little nuances of color shifts that you can see what was going on underneath. Now, in addition to that, when he painted, as I said, there artists couldn't always afford new materials. Uh, an artist would often scrape off earlier paintings starting and occasionally they would abandon the image with a uniform coat of ground, which is uh, like a whitewash, a primer coat of paint to the, sometimes it's a placard board, sometimes it was uh, a stretched piece of canvas, whatever they were painting on, they'd add another level of uh, paint just to really completely uh, clean the surface off so that the paint that was underneath doesn't show through. Papa Picasso didn't use that and I, and I really kind of applaud him for that because he's taking those faults, taking those things that went, that were mistakes and turning them into better pieces of work and I'm all for doing that. Now when he would do that, he sometimes would cover with the ground but that was very rarely. What he would do is rework that painting uh, often directly over that image and he wouldn't use a clean side again flipping the board over who was a board some because some paintings are done on boards or abandoning the previous attempt he would just move on through and, and imply and use those lines use that structure that he had previously to incorporate into the image now looking at his work um, just a little bit of background on this on this guy he was born in 1881 died in 1973 so he's not he's not really out of recent memory I mean we have people uh, art teachers art professors who were alive when he was alive and you, they could see a living artisan who is a world famous artisan during their lifetime that's just really cool to me now he did go to fine art school and his family moved to kind of like a, a different area of Spain, La Coruña. Don't speak Spanish, so I know I probably butchered that. Uh, and they moved there in 19 in 1890. And he started was taking up those classes right after he was about you know high school age, so like 14 to 19 years of age. Uh, his father was the one who initially taught him how to draw and paint. He started painting when he was just seven years old. Now for this uh, the section of work that he was doing is called his blue period and his muses were patients at the saint lazare hospital the same year that he co-founded the art javon magazine so being a publisher creating a magazine 
being influenced by people in the hospital. So he, he's aware of anxiety, death, uh, happenstance of just going on through death of life. So you're, you're going to take those tragedies and at least he's doing something proactively with it. So he's creating these artworks, creating these pieces that it is sad, but it's a, it's a life. Uh, now he painted using expressionism, and post-impressionistic styles. So using all these influences, so creating artwork from a very young age, using it to influence his livelihood, going to an art school, being a trained artisan, being classically trained, then moving to a place where his artwork started out, where he's studying characters from life, and those people from life are in a in a hospital in a negative state, but using those those aspects of his life to help influence the artwork. So what do you so using that as a as a jumping off point, why do you think he made those decisions in the artwork? Works that he made. Why do you think the the mother is in a is in a robe? Why do you think the father is also dressed in a in a dark color robe? The son who's next to the father with a it almost looks like a crimson, but it's got that blue hue drawn over the top of it. Why are all those elements there? And then again, do you like this piece? Do you not like this piece? What are your thoughts on this piece? Uh, as always, raise a hand down in your comments below. Give me your two cents. I'd love to know uh, what my students think, how they think, and why they think it always. As always, class, I will see you guys next class. You guys have a good one. Later, guys.